And this demonstration is a simple one, but it relates to the history of the, our understanding of the atomic theory. A man around the end of the 1800s named J.J. Thompson did experiments with things called cathode ray tubes. Now this is a cathode ray tube. This is a cathode ray tube TV that's more around my time. A long time ago, around the end of the 1800s, they had cathode ray tubes, but they didn't look like this. But we're going to use it to demonstrate what J.J. Thompson was able to show. If you look at this, there's an electron beam gun right down here. Now this gun shoots particles at the screen inside this tube. Now, if you look, you can kind of see that this gun, how this gun works. It's shooting particles at each pixel along the screen and kind of prints it row by row. Due to what you can view on the video here, you might even be able to see that line being printed going up and up and up. Now, it's probably going faster than what you're seeing here. You're just seeing the frequency of that wave matching up with the frequency of the camera. Now, this cathode ray tube is a lot more powerful than what J.J. Thompson used. All he had was a simple beam being shot from one end to the other end and lighting up the end of the screen. Now, what he did was he took electromagnets and he put it near the beam and he saw what happened. And I'm going to show you that right now. If I take this magnet and put it near the screen, you might be able to see what's happening to the beam itself. Notice that the, it distorts the image. What's happening is, is that beam full of particles are being deflected either one way or the other. J.J. Thompson was able to theorize that atoms at the time had more than just no charge. They actually had negative charge in them based on the particles of the beam. Previously they thought that atoms were indivisible, that they didn't really have anything, that they were spherical um, and small. But J.J. Thompson was able to discover that atoms actually had charge, specifically negative charge, and he called those negative charge particles electrons. Now his model of an atom, what he thought an atom looked like, was like a bowl of pudding. In fact, he called it plum pudding, where the pudding itself was a sea of positive charge and little tiny plums were stuck in that pudding that represented negatively charged particles he called electrons.